And so let's dive into this a little bit. As we get to look at this, this is going to be the 8-8 Lions Gate. It happens on a Tuesday, August 8th. And as we get to look at this, that this actual portal is not a single day portal. It actually transcends multiple different uh, days. And it is a, a window of time that generally occurs between July 28th and August 12th. And what this is, is it's something that is connected to something called the solar cross quarter. And this is a, 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 a marked point in time for the, the solar calendar, if you will, that it's the moment between the solstice and the equinox. So the solstices, again, are going to be uh, summer um, and winter, and then we have the equinoxes of spring and fall, right? And so these cross quarters come at a time in between equinox and solstice time. So you know, as we get to look at this, this is actually a very marked point in time. But the thing that's also very significant about this is this wasn't just some, the, the, actually all the solar crosses actually have a very significant um, meaning to them. This particular one was always very, very special to a lot of uh, different nations that we have a deep resonance and connection to. So it's very connected to the Egyptian cultures, um, uh, the Druidic cultures, and within uh, many of the Native American cultures. And as we look at this energy, that this marked a time of the thinning of the veils. There is also another solar cross quarter that would happen between the equinox and the solstice that would come in the fall, right? And that one is the other time in that that quarter where again we recognize that as the thinning of the veils well right now as we get into this eight eight lion's gate it is really truly on a significant level the thinning of the veils it's kind of like that in between zone where all of a sudden you can see between all the dimensions for a little while and actually have that ability to to have cleaner communication with your guides to really truly dive deeply into patterns that you might be holding so that you can get true higher mind clarity. This is a beautiful time to get upgrades, inspirations, to do your sacred work, to do um, uh, whether or not you're doing automatic writing or where you're doing voice recording into an audio recorder, but go for walks, sit in meditation and let your higher self channel through you the wisdom that you are ready to receive at this time. This again is connected to the star nation of Dubai just because it is right at that 15 degrees of Leo. So each sign has 30 degrees within it or three deacons, which are 10 degrees each, but 30 and half of 30 is 15. So this is why there's a significance but the significance of this is also that Dubé is at exactly 15 degrees of Leo. And so as we get to kind of dive into this, I want to talk a little bit more about Dubé for you. Um, but let me add this one little bit here. Uh, and I wish I had um, some pictures for you. I will um, definitely recommend and maybe put her link in, um, Caitlin Castell is an incredible shamanic astrologer. She shares beautiful, beautiful, beautiful videos and wisdom. She just has such a loving, kind heart. I've taken um, quite a few courses with her. I did the, the last Venus cycle with her um, and just a plethora of wisdom. And so within that, she does have some articles that really go in to the 8-8 Lion's Gate with the depictions of the solar or, or the constellation alignments. And this stargate is really about how the sun is moving between the constellations of the crab or cancer and Leo, the lion. And as it moves between the constellations, uh, you're going to see that there's an in-between point where there's actually a very clean trajectory of, of radiance and energy that aligns us through to the Sirius star system.
So in Egyptian times, this was a time when great harvest and abundance was celebrated because it was the time when the, the Nile River would begin flooding. This also had connections in many times just to the vibration of ceremonies and bringing forth higher wisdoms because of the direct connection through these stargates, through the Orion's belt and the Sirius star system to, to receive transmissions. Now, these are memories that we have from when the stargates were actually open upon the earth. And um, they, many of them are coming open again, but for a very, very long time, they've been shut down in order to preserve and protect primarily the energy um, of the higher dimensional planes with where these stargates lead and also keeping other races from infiltrating into the earth. So now if we can imagine this is a direct connection to the Sirius star, I'm going to invite you guys also, if you want to check out the work of Robert Temple fascinating writer. He's quite a, a humorous um, presenter when he actually talks, but he wrote a book in the 70s called The Serious Mysteries, and it's based on the Dogon tribe in Africa, and all of the research that he did, and it's just absolutely fascinating, but one little beautiful tidbit I kind of want to share within this is um when you look at the Sirius star system, we primarily see Sirius A, the big, beautiful radiant star in the sky that you can't miss. It outshines pretty much every other star except for when Venus is visible in the sky. Now, Sirius B, um, I forget when he said Sirius B was finally discovered. I actually want to say it was in the 70s, but don't quote me on that. Uh, but when they finally discovered it, it was the validation for the wisdom that the Dogon tribe had always known about the Sirius star system and the travelers from the Sirius system. And within this, Sirius B is not visible to us because Sirius A outshines it. It's so bright. But Sirius B, when when it is kind of visible and you can get a picture where you can actually see its uh, its uh, size in comparison to Sirius A. I do believe uh, that Sirius A is about 10,000 times the size of Sirius B. Sirius B is known as a white dwarf star, so its density is far, far more um, magnetic than our field is here. Most of the beings that exist in Sirius B are of the aquatic race lines and the Christic Maharaji blue ray lineage lines. And these are the ones that hold the council or the temples of the crystalline consciousness. So this is where a lot of uh, us have passed through and are connected to and that create that passion in us to be in service to humanity. Now, the beings in Sirius B, again, the ones that we work with primarily are more of a higher vibrational or a higher second harmonic universe to third harmonic universe. So what that means is fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth dimensional spectrums of consciousness. And that when you look at Sirius B in connection to Sirius A, Sirius B is about exactly the same size as our sun in our system. So just as a comparison, Sirius B looks like a little dot compared to Sirius A, but it's a perfect representation of how tiny our solar logos is to Sirius A. And we are in a binary star rotation. This is where a lot of our yuga cycles are actually based off of our cycles with the Sirius star and our consciousness elevates every time we get closer together and then when we move farther away we get into the the darker yugas and then when we come closer again we come back into the higher consciousness yugas our serious connection through this eight eight lion's gate is a time when we have direct communion and alignment to this crystalline consciousness template so if you are working with the double diamond heart the double diamond um, radiance pillar of light within you. If you are working with your Maharic or your 12th dimensional shield of consciousness, this is going to be a powerful time for truly 
elevating that experience of, of that manifestation within you. And through that, elevating your corridors of consciousness, of telecommunication, and access to your guardian alliances or races that you're connected to as far as that communion. So this, again, the time of the thinning of the veils. And this is just another kind of example as, as I wanted to just give a little bit of a different perspective of how you might be able to work with the 8-8 Lion's Gate. And now just the last thing on Dubé. Dubé in human design is um, one of the quarters of initiation. And as one of the quarters of initiation, it has to do with civilization. It has to do with kind of structuring and, and how we create our experience through our different cycles of consciousness and incarnations. And I thought this was very interesting within there that um, whatever star race shared this information with Ra Uruhu, that they actually made a very significant reference to Dube, which is again, not a star nation that many talk about. Now, one of the best places that you can find information on Dube or um, the, the, the Dipper, or in some of the planetary systems within there is actually going to be through the books of Anton Parks. He has a series of books that are told from a perspective of memories that he has brought back and absolutely phenomenal information in there that he dives so beautifully deep into our connection and our timeline galactic histories connected to Dubé. And as we get to look at this, this is a star system of female founder races. They are a subgroup of the Amasudum. So they are basically a priestess lineage line. They are created many times. We, we have a hard time with understanding this, but we're all different created race lines. Even the Indigos, we're created race lines. We're created for a purpose, right? And so these um, Amasudum beings are basically divine feminine priestess lineages. When we think of Isis and Hathor and all of these different beings, you know, the, we think of them as priestesses or goddesses. And truly what they were are beings who they, that was their purpose to live that path and to teach and uphold those codes and those wisdoms in order for those transmissions to exist within a planetary system's consciousness. So that's what the Amasudam or the priestesses job is, is to basically keep the codes within the consciousness of the species of a planetary system. They're very deeply connected to what happened in the electric or the Titan wars. This could also be seen as a time of the, the Hyperborean wars. And really, they are mystics within Dubé more so than warriors. They were not warriors. And so it was very challenging and difficult for these race lines to get called to fight when it was time to actually be called to support Tiamata. And Tiamata, again, is a title, not so much a particular individual, but it's more of a title of, uh, and I don't want to say queen of heaven, just because that is more associated with Orion. But if you could imagine that from a creatrix point of view. And within this, they exist within the angelic or the Kadistu realms. They reside within the highest realms and guide the lower worlds. They're some of the primary creators and developers of this solar system, primarily connected to the planet Venus. Venus used to be like a university with temples and universities and many, many star nations would come there in order to basically reside there while earth was more like the garden where they would come, but not, not so much where they would live but primarily where they would come and they would seed and they would nurture and they would grid and they would plant the crystalline templates and all of these different ley lines and systems upon the earth in order to stabilize it, to support more and more life, the longevity of life and the consciousness, the evolutionary consciousness of the planet. So Venus is very connected to many of you um, through memories in your star lineage. Of, of that is where the higher wisdom is. That is where many of your values and how you see the ethics of this world to be um, needed to be guided into. And so within this, you know, this is also going to be the times of Mars and Maldek being seated and worked with. But again, during that electric war, 
uh, this was definitely a time when the solar system was destroyed and we have the asteroid belt now. Uh, and so this is going to really tie in these having any connection to the star nation at all is going to heavily tie you to a lot of the destruction timelines that happened in the solar system, the explosion of Maldek, the the um, uh, taking over of Mars as more of a, a war colony and many of the other asteroids in different systems, basically the fighting of the body parts of mother in the solar system for who is going to control it, what systems were where, you know, and there are zones throughout our entire solar system here of what races are actually um, kind of in charge of different zones. So, you know, as we learn to bring our consciousness as one, just as planetary consciousness, there is eventually going to be the need for us to learn how to evolve into a galactic consciousness where we start to have kind of a connectedness throughout our entire solar system, because we are all from the same logos. <laughs> we are all from the same sun, the Helios, the, the solar Rishi that upholds this solar system that we're in, we're all connected to it because we all had to pass through it at some point in order to incarnate here. So we've all made an agreement with this system in some way to be here. And so this is a very beautiful energy that we can attune to with the Syrian um, energy and also with this vibration of Leo. This is going to be in the gate seven. This is going to be the time of our eight, eight lion's gate will be in the gate seven. And this is about union. It is about learning to come into a unity consciousness because on the shadow level, it wants to be, um, basically it has this level of division and there can be judgment within that. You know, how do we lead? How do we lead? Well, it's like, well, I need to make sure I get what we need for us, but then, you know, there's division about you and what they need. And, you know, Again, this is a leadership energy within Leo that is asking us to really start to look at what is it that we are being called to fight for or speak up for or be a guide for. The gate seven in the I Ching was called the army because it does kind of have that vibration of do and charge and go to it. But the ultimate goal is to realize that the greatest leader embraces the gift of being the listener. So it's very similar to that gate 31. And it's about being the listener and truly in service, not in control. So another gate that takes us deep into the heart.